I hated the drudgery of having to go to class every single day to keep in shape to be a dancer. I got very bored with that side of it. He was a remarkable classical dancer. Something people forget that he was a classical virtuoso. The sort of things I was given to dance, I also thought were very boring. And the sort of virtuoso divertissement pieces where you just come on and do pyrotechnics. I remember Kenneth as a dancer from the first days of his career with Sadler's Wells Theatre Ballet, when he was appearing in a variety of uh, very jokey roles, and also uh, coming, appearing as a very serious romantic performer in things like Les Sylphid, and as the moon in a ballet by Alfred Rodrigues called uh, Blood Wedding, and of course in a comedy role that was made for him as Sherlock Holmes and as Dr. Moriarty both in a work called The Great Detective by Margaret Dale. His finest role, I think, was with John Cranko in The Lady and the Fool, where he was the serious clown. He was a beautiful, romantic performer. He also had a wonderful sense of humor on stage. I wanted to do more. I thought I should be an interpretive dancer, but I never got the opportunity to do anything like that. So I couldn't wait to finish, really. I stopped dancing when I was about 23, I think, mainly because I had the most terrible attack of stage fright, and I just hated performing. And I sort of turned to choreography as a release from, from dancing. And I was lucky enough that the first thing I did, everybody liked. In fact, he only got his opportunity when someone dropped out at the last minute. He had one week to create his first work. It was called Somnambulism. It was done on one of our little concerts somewhere, and it was incredibly good. We were all very excited and realised at last we'd found another will-be uh, English choreographer of real merit. Somnambulism used this kind of third-stream jazz by Stan Kenton, and it was obviously based on classical technique, but it was a very new and jazzy way of using that technique. It was uh, quite clear that uh, a new force had arrived in ballet. Almost immediately, Ninette de Valois commissioned Macmillan's first work for the Sadler's Wells Theatre Ballet. It was Danse Concertante, set to music by Stravinsky. I tried to match the spikiness of the Stravinsky music and the sort of offbeat quality and jazzy quality of the music. And I, I've seen it recently, actually, and I think that still stands out. It's a plotless ballet, but I broke a lot of the rules of straightforward classical dancing. I mean, when you look at ballet in a classroom, I mean, what the teacher wants is harmonious line, to music, um, and I made it not harmonious. I mean, very like the music, which isn't. It's very spiky and broken up. And I broke up all the lines of the body, really, which makes it very different. I think the first night of Danse Concertante is vastly memorable, because suddenly the curtain went up. There were dancers looking different from anything one had seen before at that time, doing different things. Here was a young man absolutely fizzing with ideas, fizzing with classical steps, classical steps which he was turning around, altering, giving new aspects to. A young man who had seen the theatre and the cinema and been amused and entertained and intrigued by things he'd seen there, and he suddenly found ways of putting this already into dancing so that hands became masks, fingers pointed, arms were just seen coming out of the wings. This was wildly exciting. It was a great sort of, like a cork out of a bottle of champagne, these ideas suddenly poured out and fizzed all over the stage. And the dancers, as always, looked marvellous. In Danse Concertante, Macmillan first worked with the designer who was to be his collaborator more than 30 years later on The Prince of the Pagodas, Nicholas Georgiadis. 
Was it straight away um, an easy relationship with Kenneth? Actually, no. It was never easy because of the complexity of his work. And it's the same now. The, it hasn't changed, this relationship, because it's, uh, it, you can't do a straightforward, literal interpretation of what he wants. And also you can't do the decorative interpretation of what you want. It has to be both. Really, when you're designing for a dancer, you have to only design that part of the body because the legs really should be seen and hardly covered. So, I mean, as a designer, I mean, he, he wants to put everything onto the body, which I understand. But in, in some cases, that's not possible. So those are the sort of things we fight about. Yeah, Teddy, can you bend your legs more? Yeah, but one after the other. In every movement not she creates, there is also a psychological background. It's not decorative movement. Yeah. Bend, bend. Therefore, you know, it makes a great demand on one's imagination to have uh, costumes that are sort of easy to move in, decorative, and at the same time they have to express some of this background to all the, the dances he creates. That's it. The other thing that marked him out of the choreographer from the beginning, apart from vocabulary, was a very strong, pungent sense of character. It came with his second ballet, which was House of Birds, where he showed, told the story of some young a bond girl who are trapped by a witch and who turns people into birds. The House of Birds was taken from a story in a Grimm's fairy tale. Even then, for Macmillan, a fairy tale becomes a vehicle for an exploration of the human psyche. I am very interested in people, and I wanted to portray uh, the dilemma of people living and working and being with each other. I wanted to show that kind of thing in ballet, and that, at that time, um, in the early 50s, that was not a very popular thing to do. I think people were, in choreography, were very interested in the, the purely decorative side of ballet, and I was not. If all art is autobiography, uh, it must be admitted that some is more autobiographical than others, and somehow one feels that with someone like um, Macmillan, one's dealing with someone like, rather like Picasso, that somehow a key to his uh, work, a key is partly in his life. 